This is Jordan Kovalev with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode where we're going to get to compare two single auger vertical style juicers today. It's always a good day when I get to share with you guys new juicers that are now available or will soon to be available actually on the market and today is no different. We're going to compare two uh, juicers, the uh, long-standing Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite Model C7000. Uh, this is Kuvings latest home version, although maybe in a few months they're going to come out with their EVO version, which is basically the same exact motor, um, the same juicing screen, same auger, but a different bowl design and a different feed chute design. Um, unfortunately, that machine will cost maybe $150, $200 more than the current machine, but get the same exact yield. So if you guys are wondering about the EVO model, um, same performance, it's just going to look cooler, it's going to be more upscale model basically. Hopefully it'll have a longer warranty too. Um, and yeah, Kuvings is basically has the patent on the wide feed shoot design juicer. They are the ones that first invented it, came out with it, have mastered it, and have been selling their machines for many years now, including their uh, commercial unit, the CS600. So be sure to check my other videos on the CS600. If you do need a commercial model that could run 24 hours straight without stopping. Uh, the home model, the C7000 model, has a 30 minute duty cycle, which means you should only run it for 30 minutes at a time until you shut it off, let it rest, let it cool down until you can juice more. That being said, I could say unofficially, I'd use this machine probably for about up to an hour at a time without any issue, although the motor actually does get a bit warm. So then over on this side, we have the newcomer. This is a newcomer to the American market. Although the company behind it, Vitality for Life, has been in business over 20 years now. And I remember meeting the owner of the Vitality for Life many, many, many years ago now. Um, so they are legit. This is actually the BioChef uh, Juicer by Vitality for Life. And this is the uh, BioChef Quantum Whole Slow Juicer, right? Uh, this may also look kind of similar to the uh, BioChef, or Bio, Bio Chef, depending on where you are in the world. Um, Atlas Pro whole slow juicer, right? And so I think uh, the, the top set on the Atlas Pro or the Quantum is the same, I believe, just by looking at pictures. I'm not exactly sure, although the motor body is definitely different. Okay, so this is their latest version. It may not even be available yet. I got it actually shipped directly to me. Uh, so this is probably the first video you guys are going to even see before the company's even putting one out. And, you know, my goal with this video is just to show you guys what happens um, when I'm juicing in the juicers. Also, going over the different parts and accessories that are available with the juicers, how they operate, where they're made, the warranty length, and my just my personal assessment of the machines, right, that, that I think to be true. Now, you know, everything I say in this video is not sponsored by any company. It's my own words. Some companies, they get mad at me for saying what I do, but I'm just giving you guys my opinions which may or may not be accurate. I'm going to say that right up front, all right? <laughs> but I always try to give it my best and just say it like it is and tell my opinions and also maybe try to back those up for you guys, all right? So uh, these are both vertical slow juicers, right? And as vertical slow juicers, that means they're my favorite type of juicer in the whole wide world. You know, there's centrifugal juicers, there's horizontal juicers, there's twin gear juicers, there's two-stage grinding and pressing juicers. And actually, at present time, I like the vertical single auger juicer because for me, it's the easiest style machine to use and clean, and it's relatively fast. It's considered, some people call it a masticating juicer. I actually prefer the term cold press juicer because literally it's grinding and pressing out the juice, and it makes a high quality juice. And generally, depending on what you're juicing, it's going to make a pretty good yield, good solid yield on most things, although something like carrots is going to get a lesser yield than a high speed machine. Uh, you know, like a Breville, but on the other hand, the slow juicers will actually create more nutrition, you know, and in, in, specifically when I'm talking about nutrition, I'm talking about some of the unique phytochemicals and phytonutrients that are in the carrots or in broccoli or in other foods uh, so that you'll get actually uh, more disease-fighting ability from, based on studies that I've seen, all right? In addition, the vertical style machines, as compared to other style machines out there, are, are basically jacks of all trades, right? If you're a jack of all trades, that means you're good at, you know, painting the house, 
doing plumbing, doing some electrical work, fixing roofs, but you're not really good at like any one thing, right? Likewise, the vertical juicers tend to be very good juicers for juicing fruits and vegetables and leafy greens and all kinds of different things, you know, for the most part when juiced in combination with one another. You know, so if you don't know what you're going to juice, you're going to juice a little bit of this, a little bit of that. A vertical juicer generally, but not always, is a, definitely a good way to go. So that's why I like it because I juice from fruits to vegetables to leafy greens in the right proportions and the verticals do great. I would encourage you guys before you buy a vertical juicer or if you already own a vertical juicer, check in the description down below. I'll put a link to my video, Juice Like a Pro in any vertical slow juicer. Uh, in any verse slow juicer, there are rules you need to follow that the manufacturers unfortunately do not tell you. So you get the best performance out of the machine. The machine does not clog back up or give you major headaches or issues. You know, I've also learned that some vertical slow juicers, although they are all vertical, they're always a little bit different in the design. You know, depending on where they're designed, whether that's in Korea whether they're designed in Australia, whether they're designed in China, and also where they're made, whether they're made in Korea, whether they're made in China, it, it just all falls in to make your experience better or worse. So it's important to have a proper recipe when juicing in any vertical slow juicer. This means you wanna have something that's pretty dominant in root vegetables, carrots or beets. You know, if you are, these guys will juice greens, but greens do need to be pre-cut despite having a three inch wide feed chute on these machines. Doesn't mean you can just start cramming anything that will fit into the feed chute. You know, it, it's not gonna be good. It's like cramming anything into your pie hole, right? And you know, depending on what you put into your pie hole or your mouth can have repercussions. Even though I could put McDonald's into my mouth, I could put cookies and Cokes and sodas into my mouth, right? But those, in my opinion, have really negative repercussions putting into us and putting the wrong things into the juicers could also have a bad repercussions. So I like to base my personal diet around fruits and vegetables, which are the best foods on the entire planet. Um, and actually certain percentages and combinations of fruits and vegetables for me, but more importantly, you need to put those in the juicer. So you have, a, have to have a good root vegetable dominated uh, base. If not roots, you also should have a lot of uh, and or celery that's pre-cut and chopped up into quarter inch or even better, eighth inch pieces. It's all in the Juice Like a Pro video where I explain that. Uh, these machines generally do, for a slow juicer, they generally do the best on fruits. Uh, the only exception would be a two-stage hydraulic press that you grind and press. Those ones will beat these in, uh, for juicing fruits, but otherwise these ones are the best style for fruits. But even within juicing fruits and verticals, some verticals literally do it <laughs> better uh, than others. So you want to check my other videos on that topic. Anyways, enough about the verticals. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into the, some of the specifics about the machines here. Uh, on this side we have the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite C7000. Um, this one has been out for a little bit of time and it's a pretty solid and durable machine. The, th the reason why I like this machine is actually it is made in Korea. I've actually visited the factory in Korea where it is made. They actually make the motors, which is actually a 240 watt motor um, in this machine. And they make it on site, so that's really cool. Um, good quality machine, and I definitely trust Kuvings to make it right. The other thing is that this machine has a full 10 year warranty on the entire machine, uh, the motor, and all the different juicing parts and I have had direct experience with Kuvings, uh, me personally and also my customers giving me feedback. They do have an office and repair facility in the United States that I also have visited, I definitely get around, uh, to make sure that they are legit and they will you know, repair or replace and have an inventory of parts in the US to take care of you. And from customer feedback that have dealt with Kuvings, pretty much most people have had excellent experiences when dealing with Kuvings for warranty support. Now I will say one of the biggest challenges with any vertical slow juicer is if you overfeed and use the, use the pusher to feed things in, feed things too fast and or don't cut your produce, any slow juicer can have issues whereas it's going to be hard to take apart. So if your slow juicer is hard to take apart, it isn't necessarily a problem with your juicer, it's a problem with actually how you're using your juicer, in my opinion, you know, but I'm not there to see how you're using your juicer. Um, so yeah, 10-year warranty, um, support, support uh, in the United States, office in the United States. They've been in business for over 20 years in Korea as specifically a manufacturer. So uh, that's why I like this machine. And then over to the B 
BioChef or BioChef, the BioChef by Vitality for Life. They've been in business for over 20 years, but as far as I know, they don't actually own their factories, although they may have investments in factories. Um, so they are mostly a reseller. And so as such, they have, you know, probably facilities in Australia, but in the U.S., I'm not aware that they have any, you know, specific office you could go to with, you know, support staff that does, um, you know, repairs and all this stuff, although they may carry parts and whatnot in different warehouses for warranty service inside the United States. In addition, this machine is actually made in China. And so, you know, that could be a pro or con. Some people like to boycott China. I think, you know, there are some certain products from China that are actually quite good. China is very good, in my opinion, at making good quality blenders, uh, you know, but it, that also depends on the specific brand and model of blender, although I haven't seen too many good quality, uh, super good quality juicers coming out of China so far. Um, this machine, unlike the Kuvings, actually has a lifetime warranty. Yes, I'll say that again, lifetime warranty, but it's only on the motor. And I'll tell you guys this also, the motor is the least likely part on the juicer to fail. Now the seals on the motor could probably fail and if crud gets into the motor like your machine's like overflowing and juice is getting down into the motor, that could fail. Now I'm not sure if that would cover, because, is that a motor issue because the bearings and the seals on the motor failed because the motor didn't fail? I'm not exactly sure. Um, but other than that, the machine has a five year warranty on the part, so that would be basically you know, this whole top set here, five-year warranty, whereas on the Kuvings, it's a 10-year warranty. So the thing that I've experienced is that the most likely part to fail on the juicers is the top part of the machine. Generally, uh, you know, the uh, this feed chute housing could get damaged. Sometimes the screen gets damaged. On rare occasion, the auger gets damaged. Um, but yeah, the, the parts definitely could add up. So yeah. Lifetime and five years made in China, made in Korea. So basically, the warranty is double on the uh, cubings for the parts. So that's, oh, and then uh, I think the next thing I want to talk about is the design. So I want to take apart these machines part by part so you guys can see how they're made. I guess first we'll start with the cubing because they were the inventor and the uh, patent holder for the three inch wide feed chute and some other juicers maybe infringing on patents. I have no idea if things are infringing on patents. You're going to have to talk to patent lawyers for that. Um, but anyways, uh, so this machine here has a nice uh, three inch wide feed chute with a little nub here in the um, in the feed chute there, if you could see. So that's like, so you can't stick your finger down it. And so if you're putting in an apple, you need to use a pusher to push past this little point to basically get the produce through. Another thing I like about this machine is it actually has a nice funnel, so if you are putting chopped up leafy greens in the machine, if you miss the hole, um, they're going to go in the funnel, and then you just sweep them in pretty easily. So I do like that there. And then also, if you notice inside here, the uh, feed chute is basically like uh, concave, so it kind of goes in. So this is uh, good because the produce goes in, it kind of gets ground up and then shoved in there. And the C7000 is different, definitely better than the original B6000. Uh, with actually uh, feeding the produce that's kind of sitting up, hanging up in this area to get fed in. But of course it also depends on the ordering uh, as you're feeding the produce and how you're doing that. Uh, next let's go ahead and pull out the auger here. So the auger on the Kuvings is a GE Altum auger. Oh and the other thing I want to say is that on the parts here, all the Kuvings parts is made out of uh, uh, Eastman Triton uh, copolymer, which is a non-BPA material, and I could tell actually by tapping it, and uh, we'll uh, do a tap test in a minute. But this is the auger, this is a GE Altum, it's eight times harder than augers formerly used on other machines, other juicers, and it's uh, pretty basic. It, it, this is just how it looks, and underneath, there's actually, it's recess, so I like the recess underneath, I could like literally get my pointer finger in there, because this will get clogged with pulp at the end of juicing, this is completely normal. You'll have to take your finger or a brush and brush it out. So I like that I can get my finger in there to clean it out uh, fairly easily. Next up, uh, pulling out the uh, wiping blade, which basically has a uh, silicone wipers on the edges and underneath that has um, teeth to basically drive it around. And then we have the uh, juicing screen. Once again, this is also the GE Alta material with holes uh, that the juice comes out of. And then uh, also, if you guys look on the bottom, this is a closed bottom on the juicing screen. So this means that it's going to be easier to clean the bowl. In addition, uh, there's going to be less pulp put into your juice because this bowl is sealed and it's not letting any of the pulp 
um, you know, go into the juice, the pulp pretty much must exit out of the pulp port. So that's that. And then here is the bowl of the Kuvings. I like that on the Kuvings, this is actually open right here. If you guys could see that right there. If they have to, it's cut out, so if you need to like use your finger to kind of get in there to like clean it out a little bit, help keep pulp moving, uh, flowing out, you could easily do that, so I do like that. In addition, they have a spout with a spout cap here that you could close to do mixing inside the bowl or to stop drips once you're done juicing. Um, I prefer to only use this for stopping drips. I don't like to do mixing inside the bowl. Based on my testing, you will lose a little bit of yield. And then uh, on this uh, spout there, if you guys can see, before the juice comes out the spout, there's like a little protector so you can't stick your finger back up into the juicer. Um, this is a good thing for juicing, but you know, when you're making like sorbets, uh, the sorbet actually has to go through there, so this machine cannot be used for any kind of grinding other than for making sorbets. Now, I do like the bottom of this bowl. If you guys look, it's just completely flat, except it has this little um, uh, gear here that rotates that turns the wiping blade. And so that's uh, underneath. And then also uh, inside here on the bottom, there's basically an apparatus to make that wiping blade gear uh, run. So that's basically completely uh, hidden. Uh, and then in addition on the bottom, unlike some juicers, this has no pulp flap that you need to remove after use. Um, you know, the pulp flap may tear or break. Um, they could also come off, get moldy. Uh, so this has none of that to deal with. You can just basically blast water through here to get it completely clean when you're done. And then uh, moving on to the base, the base is nice and heavy uh, duty here, uh, 240 watts. Um, yeah, so that's all the parts on the Kuvings. Let's go ahead over to the um, BioChef Quantum. All right, let's go ahead and take off this feed chute. So this feed chute is a little bit different. The top of this feed chute basically has a standard size like feed chute, a smaller feed chute, and then if you lift this little lever here in the front, whoops, this is a trap door style. So this is also a three inch wide trap door. So we're gonna go ahead and compare these two for you guys. You know, you got a small feed chute in the trap door versus a large feed chute. At least on this machine, it doesn't have that little block. So when you put something in the trap door, you don't have to actually push it in. It'll actually, gravity will take it and just drop it in for you. I mean, there's pros and cons of the trap door. Um, I personally still like the, even if it had a trap door, I would still like a funnel on the machine. So like if I am putting leafy greens in, which should be pre-cut, they shouldn't just be put in hole, um, you know, and I, and I miss the hole, they're gonna not fall on my countertop. Now the other thing that's interesting, you know, although this is claimed to be BPA free, and so I'm gonna take them at their word on that, I also like to check things out. And so, you know, but generally, the Eastman Triton Copolymer, I visited them at different trade shows, I, I know what their material is. It's kind of like, it's a little bit more flexible and is a little bit more uh, resonant, if, I say, if, I, if I'm saying that right. So we're gonna go ahead and tap on this piece here and listen carefully. That's the thickness there, so it's thinner up here, but it's thicker here. But you guys hear how that sounds? Now we're gonna tap on the Kuvings piece. Listen, listen carefully. So I don't know if you guys could notice the difference, but I could completely notice the difference. Like this one's like a like higher pitch. To me, um, this would make me believe that is actually like a polycarbonate material. You know, that's just my personal opinion. I don't know if that's accurate or not. Anyways, uh, moving on. If we uh, pull out this uh, auger here, so this auger is actually quite heavy, and this is the auger on the BioChef. This is the auger on. The Kuvings, so actually the Kuvings auger, uh, they're probably pretty similar in size, although this one has a lot more mass. If you guys look, this is kind of like more like a pyramid, fat at the bottom, you know, narrow at the top. And while this is fatter at the bottom and more narrow at the top, it's still quite uh, big. In addition, uh, this machine actually has gears on the bottom of the auger that actually spin the wiping blade, whereas the Kuvings does not. I prefer augers that do not have these uh, gears on the bottom. That's actually one less thing to clean. In addition, uh, you know, although the auger on the Kuvings was open, the auger on the BioChef is open, but I cannot get my pointer finger easily in there underneath to basically clean out any pulp, so this is going to make cleaning a little bit more difficult. Now, the curious thing that is interesting to me, and this is like a world's first on the um, BioChef uh, Atlas Pro and the Quantum here, is this auger. So this auger is actually designed kind of like 
an Omega, original Omega 3 vert, uh, 350 model with basically like a single kind of cutting blade or this helps to basically cut produce up before it goes into the juicer because it's going to get cut here and then it's going to basically get uh, pressed and squeezed here whereas the Kuvings uh, they decided not to go with any kind of thing like this, but they just basically go for the whole crushing action. So this is actually kind of interesting. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work. Oh, and the other thing that's interesting is on the bottom, if you guys see around the bottom ring, there's actually stainless steel lined, which is kind of nice, whereas on this machine there isn't. I have seen on some machines from China that don't have this uh, stainless steel line in there that isn't quite properly uh, lined up when juicing, is that uh, this bottom part can be prone to grinding plastic in your juice, so I'm glad that uh, Kuvings has this uh, here, so that I haven't ever seen that to be a problem with Kuvings. Although I have seen it to be a problem with some Chinese units. Not to say that it's going to happen on this machine, because I haven't used it yet. <laughs> All right. Next coming out is the uh, wiping blade. So here's the wiping blade on the BioChef. Here's the wiping blade on the Kuvings, and they look pretty similar. Basically, they got the gears on the bottom of both. They basically have a two blanks on here, which basically just kind of is there for looks. And then they basically have a wiping blades on uh, on both. So, yeah, it's pretty much uh, how it looks there. Yeah, pretty similar. I can't say anything about these parts. But next, the most important part is the juicing screen. So let's go ahead and take a look at the screen. Once again, uh, I believe this is the GE Alta material. If it's not the Alta material, that would be not so smart because uh, generally... If you don't have the ultimate material on the juicing screen, then it will tend to break more. I have no way to know if this is actually ultimate or not. Let's see if we squeeze that. I mean, they're both pretty firm there. But now if we're looking at the screen side by side, it looks like the uh, top screen on the BioChef is actually not quite as tall. So this means there's more screen area on the Kuvings. And then looking at the bottom screen... Uh, you know, they look to be about the uh, same size, approximately. And then, uh, let's see, looking at the screens here. Both, uh, actually, the Kuvings screen has one, two, three, four support bars or plastic lines that are going from top to bottom, whereas the BioChef actually has only three. And uh, both of them have, like, basically little grinding uh, plates uh, in the screen that come out that help get the produce ground up. And they're uh, both uh, fairly similar. And uh, let's, I want to take a look at the whole size here. So the whole size uh, looks to be a little bit larger on the BioChef, meaning that it may let more pulp uh, into the juice as it's being created. I mean, uh, oh, and the other thing is that uh, this guy is open on the bottom, whereas this guy is closed on the bottom. Both these machines actually have a little... Um, port in the screen that the pulp needs to flow through and then after the pulp flows through the screen uh, through the port then it needs to go through the port in the bottom of the bowl to get ejected so uh, yeah this is kind of like more of an old school design I, I like the personally the uh, new to, newer design on the slow star and the VSJ that actually has an open screen without this hole because this hole can be a blockage point when using a vertical slow juicer and then uh, finally to the bowl on the um, BioChef. Once again, I'm going to tap this for you guys. Hold it up and listen. And now I'm going to hold this guy up and tap and listen. You guys clearly could hear the difference of that, right? This part, I'll almost bet my life that this is, um, you know, Triton, which is the beef PA free material. You can also tell by um, kind of like trying to flex it. It flexes a little bit more. It's a little more flexible than polycarbonate. Whereas uh, this guy, if you tap it, a lot higher, and if you flex this, it's a lot more firmer. It doesn't flex as much as the Triton, so, you know, I, I'm not really sure that this is the Triton material personally, and I don't, I don't, I don't know, because I'm not, I can't be, like, identifying plastics, but this is my common assessment just from what I do, <laughs> or what I know. Now, the other thing is, uh, unlike the Kuvings basket, which is actually flat on the bottom, really easy to clean. This is actually kind of uh, has a little mountain in the middle of the bowl here that comes up so you got to kind of clean around that. Um, this also has a little um, gear in the bottom of the bowl like the Kuvings. Now I do like on this machine it actually has a better stopper than the Kuvings. It's a lot more um, slimline whereas the Kuvings stopper you know it's a lot more 
chunky or clunky, I would say. Um, now, the other thing is this also has the flap that you need to pull out. This little yellow flap basically puts back pressure on the pulp as it's um, coming out of the uh, juicer to keep it inside so you get a further extraction so it adds a little bit of back pressure on there and the other thing is that uh, on this little port here this port is actually quite small so it's hard to get my finger actually in there whereas on the Kuvings it's actually much larger so I could easily kind of get my finger in there to kind of clean out that port uh, with the pulp so I kind of like the design on the Kuvings better um, in addition this also has like just one little block here uh, to prevent you to put your finger up, which I think is definitely superior than the Kuvings. It actually has a three-prong kind of thing. Uh, this does the job and also impedes the flow less and is also easier to clean than the one on the Kuvings. Uh, this is actually marked up to uh, 500 milliliter and this one is actually marked up to 400 milliliter. Um, let's see, I think that's pretty much the basics on this. Uh, the other thing I want to say was... Oh yeah, the other thing I want to say was this, right? So if we like line up the bowl with the juicing screen, and then there's a like little arrow on the top of the juicing screen, and there's an arrow on the top of the bowl that you need to line up to put in. It kind of goes in and then uh, drops down in there. If I could do this. <laughs> and now the thing is, is when you put the the juicing screen and the bowl and they're lined up you should be able to see uh, you know where the pulp path has to go in that little port on the bottom of the screen so it goes to the port in the bottom of the screen and then the port in the bottom of the bowl and if I look straight down at it right it's almost like not properly designed so that it goes straight down there's actually kind of a lip inside the bowl and it looks like there's some like plastic that maybe didn't get properly ground down so like leave some little lips and this is a place that pulp can get stuck that can potentially cause excess blockage problems in this machine so I mean if I was a manufacturer I'd take like a Dremel or make sure that when these parts are made that you know that's that's pretty solid so that when you put the screen in there you have a nice clear shot instead of you know it, it looks like it's almost kind of getting blocked I don't know if you guys will be able to see that on the camera there through that little hole but it's not quite a straight shot and then if we do the same thing on the Kuvings uh, put the bowl in there now if we put it in the Kuvings basically the, the way the Kuvings is set up the Kuvings basically the bottom of the screen right here is actually comes out so actually the bottom of the screen fits into the hole completely so that basically, the after it goes through the screen, the pulp goes through the screen, it goes directly into the bowl, and there's no like transition. Whereas on this machine, there's definitely some kind of a you know transition point because the the screen uh, fits only into the top of the uh, bowl, and then has to go through part of the bowl itself. I don't know if you guys could understand that, but uh, basically. What I'm saying is that this machine is betterly designed, all right? Okay, so that's that's basically it. Oh, and the other thing is uh, that on this machine, when you're juicing, all the pulp that is created stays in the bottom of this bowl because it is, has a solid bottom on there, and the pulp will basically either go out the feed chute or stay in the bowl, <laughs> right? That's pretty much what happens. The juice comes through the screen and then comes out. But on the BioChef, basically what happens is the way they set this up, which is this is like old school design, like the original design of the vertical slow juicers, and there's nothing wrong with it, it's just a little bit different. The way they set this up, if you guys look closely, like, you guys could probably see that. But on the bottom of this screen, if we put this screen flat on the table, you'll see there's a little cutout right here, right? This is the cutout, this is the little part where the pulp comes out, but this cutout here, uh, what it does is basically allows some small amounts of pulp to actually go into your juice. You're going to have a more full body pulp or full body juice with some pulp in it. Some people like this, some people don't like this, and this was one of the big complaints on the original first versions of the vertical slow juicers, such as the original Huram, also the original VSJ843, and also a lot of the Chinese machines kind of still have a design like this. And, you know, in my opinion, most people don't particularly care for it because they're coming from a centrifugal juicer that tends to make very little pulp in the juice. So then when they get one of these machines, 
people are saying, oh man, these machines are making smoothies. So it'll be interesting to see how much pulp is actually in the juice, uh, you know, um, the Kuvings compared to the BioChef once I run that test. But from the looks of it, in my opinion, and I might be wrong, uh, this machine will probably put a good amount of pulp in your juice, all right? So uh, next I want to go ahead and assembly these guys. Assembly is easy on both these guys. And uh, let's see here, this is quite interesting here, this gasket on the top here. All right, so uh, basically you're gonna take the juicing bowl and that just, oh, we gotta make sure you put that little plug in. You don't have to worry about the plug on the Kuvings because there's is not one. Um, we're gonna set that on top. Locks into place and then we're gonna take the uh, juicing screen and the wiping blade and that just kind of like rotates into place. We're gonna line up this white arrow with the arrow right here and it's gonna drop into place. Then we're gonna take the auger, drop that guy into place, and then we're gonna take the uh, top here, line that up with the open, and then slide it to the close, and we are all assembled. Cubing's also very simple, very easy. We're gonna take this bowl here, put that on the top machine, take, put the juicing bowl on, then you're gonna take the wiping blade and the juicing screen, drop that in, and then you're gonna take the red dot on the top here, line it up with a red dot on top of the bowl here, and drop it in. I do like the orientation of the dots on the Kuvings a bit better. They're right on the top, easy to line up. Whereas this arrow uh, on the screen was on top, but this arrow here is on the side, so it's a bit more difficult. And then uh, the auger just basically uh, drops in. And uh, the main top, basically just uh, put that to the side here and uh, to the open, line this red dot with that red dot and slide it to the closed position and you're all ready and all set up. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is some of the accessories that come with both machines. So the Kuvings actually comes with a really nice thick recipe book as well as your instruction manual. And the recipe book is probably the best recipe book that comes with any juicer that I'm aware of. On the uh, BioChef it comes with an instruction book with recipe book combined, so that's actually nice because this uh, book has more recipes than most uh, juicer books uh, come with and in addition this also comes with actually a tofu maker for those of you guys that want to make tofu uh, the Kuvings has no such attachment to make tofu so that's kind of interesting the other things that are uh, come with the machines are some of the optional and included screens these are the ones for the Kuvings and these are the ones for the BioChef so the BioChef uh, comes with a coarse screen, so this screen is used for putting more pulp in your juice. If you want even more pulp, then the fine screen will because it actually has larger holes. So that's this guy here um, that's included with the machine. Part on the Bio Chef is actually a blank uh, screen that many people want on the vertical slow juicers. Basically this is a juicing screen, but it has no holes. So whatever you put in here basically gets ground up and then it gets ejected out of the pulp uh, side. That's the way they designed this uh, screen here. Now the challenge with that is that if you're using this screen and then you also have put in this yellow flap, that's not gonna be so good. So you should actually unplug this yellow flap when using the screen. That being said, if you're using the screen and unplug the yellow flap, what you're processing in the machine will come out of uh, a little bit of, of the um, hole right here. So, in my opinion, the company should actually have a different flap to put in that basically just has the rear part of the flap in there, uh, number one, or number two, they could actually design a blank plate that actually has this part closed off and has it open so that everything you grind it will actually come out this side instead of the pulp side. So, you know, just uh, these small things on how things could be designed a little bit better. And uh, over on the Kuvings, it includes this uh, blank, which I think is a lot more sexy than this guy here because it's completely clear. Once again, has that closed bottom. And this one is probably designed so that when they do grind things up, it actually comes out of uh, this side or the juice uh, spout instead of the pulp side. And uh, basically, you could do a uh, sorbets with this attachment. Uh, this attachment is not meant for doing any other purpose aside from the sorbets. And then you have as an option on the Kuvings, you actually have this uh, screen, which you might think looks like this screen. They both have kind of holes that are nice and large, but there's a big difference. Uh, this screen has the hole in the bottom to allow you to juice, and this screen in the bottom basically has no hole. So what this screen is, this is actually called a smoothie screen. So this attachment allows you to make low RPM smoothies in your Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite. 
I will put a, put a link to the video in the description below uh, where I have a video demonstrating this uh, smoothie attachment. And actually, for what it does, if you just want to make high liquid uh, smoothies, it actually does quite a good job. The smoothie that I made this time uh, in, in the Kuvings was actually quite good. Although that being said, I these days would prefer to use a vacuum blender uh, for making smoothies instead of the smoothie attachment. Um, so yeah, those are some of the different parts that come with the machines here. I mean, definitely, um, for me, the build quality, just going over these machines, I mean, the Kuvings, in my opinion, has a much better build quality than this guy. Oh, and I didn't talk about the price yet. The price of the Kuvings is only $50 more than the BioChef Quantum over here. So for the $50 more, you're getting basically twice the warranty and a better build quality, although we haven't yet tested it, which is actually coming up uh, pretty quick here. Now, the other thing I will say is actually the RPMs in the machine are actually pretty different. This is 60 RPMs, and we'll turn this on so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Pretty nice sounding solid motor there. And over on this guy, uh, we'll turn it on. It's actually more quiet, so if you're looking for a quiet machine, this is the one you're going to get. And actually, uh, according to the box, it says it runs 40 RPMs, although I am being told it actually runs at 32 RPMs, uh, you know, in the USA based on the current and voltage and all that stuff, or hertz that we have here. And it actually is looking like it runs quite slow and it's quite quiet. You know, I don't think a 30 RPM difference makes like a major difference in the quality of juice. John, 30 is lower than 60, so the juice quality is better. I don't, I don't know that I necessarily say that. They're both slow juicers, so they're both going to make a high-quality juice compared to the high-speed machines like that run at 10,000-plus RPMs. All right, so, yeah, that's basically uh, the juicers in a nutshell. Each one of them have their own sets of pros and cons. I've shared with you guys some of my opinions on them as well. I guess the next thing, I want to put my money where my mouth is, <laughs> and we're going to get into actually uh, juicing in both machines. But before I do, actually what I want to talk to you guys about is actually I want, to, I want to encourage you guys to support me and my work. If you guys enjoyed this video, if this video was helpful for you so that you guys could not make the wrong choice when buying a juicer, if my other videos, and I have over 500 videos on this YouTube channel now, has helped you to get the right juicer for you, I would encourage you guys to support me and my work. That's how I continue and am able to continue to make these videos as well as many other educational videos on YouTube dedicated to teaching people about the power of fruits and vegetables, right? So I want to thank you guys in advance for those of you guys that have purchased from me, or that will purchase from me, and thank you guys for those of you guys that have purchased from me in the past. Your, your purchase at Discount Juicers literally allows me to continue to make these videos, allows me to pay my electricity bills and put food on my table. So it's a much appreciated. And I want to also say that we do have a price match policy, and I know some of you guys are penny pinchers and want to save every last $5. And I understand that too. I'm quite frugal myself. And so know this, right? Don't just think, oh, John, I could buy it at this other place and I could save $5, but John, help me out so much. I'm just going to save $5 and not buy it from John. I would encourage you guys to support me, pay an extra $5, $10 if I am ex more expensive, right? And just do it so that, because I've helped you guys out, right? I'd appreciate it so much because if you, I don't get support, I'm going to go out of business and I will not be able to do this anymore. You know, most other sellers, small businesses like myself, are no longer a business selling juicers anymore. It's just all the big box stores, right? But even if you want to save that extra $5, let me know if you found a competitor, a big box store, any other authorized retailer of the appliances that we offer that have the item in stock that are brand new and authorized to sell the machine. I'm glad to match the other competitors' uh, lower delivered price. So all you got to do is shoot me an email, say, hey, John, I found it over here, man. I want to support you. I love your work. And I'll be glad to do that. That being said, I would encourage you guys to support me at my regular prices <laughs> so I can continue my work even better. All right? Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead and get set up, and we're going to be back with our juice-off comparison today. All right, I'm back. I'm all set up and ready to juice. I've carefully washed and weighed out all the produce, so it's the same exact weight, which definitely takes some time. I tried to get basically the same size carrots out of the same bag, one for each side, and then just repeated until I got carrots, uh, beets, um, apple, and uh, lettuce. And so first I want to do go ahead and do a weigh-in to show you guys that we have a fair fight. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the scales. There's the nice organic produce we'll be juicing today. And over on this scale, looks like we have a 1708 on the scale. 
And then uh, going over to this side, looks like we also have 1708 on the scale, and that is in grand. So 1708, 1708, looks like we have a fair fight. So let's get juicing. So now that we're all weighed in, let's go ahead and move these scales out of the way, move the produce aside. And what I want to do for you guys today is actually we're going to go ahead and time to see how much time uh, each of these juicers take to juice. Uh, the same exact amount of produce. Now this can be important. I mean, these are the three inch wide feed chute machines. Um, you know, and people think, oh yeah, the three inch wide feed chute machines, they save time. And yes, they absolutely could save time over machines that have a smaller feed chute. But then again, it depends on specifically what you're juicing, you know. So if you have a box of apples and you have the stems removed out of the apples, you put the apples in, this by far is going to be far faster than mainly any other kind of juicer that I could think of on the market because you're just dropping apples in whole, letting them process, the juice comes out, the pulp comes out. Super simple. Now if you're juicing a lot of leafy greens or even wheatgrass in these machines, they will need to be pre-cut. Wheatgrass should be cut with scissors in an eighth inch or quarter inch pieces for optimal juicing. You just start cramming wheatgrass down here, you know, nice blades of grass that are three, four, five inches long, this machine is going to get stuck, it's going to have a problem, and you're going to have a hard time uh, taking it apart and it's not going to juice effectively. So thereby on wheatgrass it's actually going to take you more time with this with a wide feed sheet machine than if you had a horizontal single auger juicer uh, that, that you literally could just put the wheatgrass in whole. All right. So I want you guys to be aware of this but in general based on my test of the wide feed sheet machines uh, generally if you're juicing a wide variety of things will save you time overall. Anyways uh, we're going to see how much time it actually takes me to juice in the kubings so we're just going to go ahead and uh, hit start. I'm going to start juicing. Some of the beets are kind of big. I might have to pre-cut them or cut them up. So that's just going to be in the process. And uh, the other thing I'll say is that when I'm juicing, I'll be rotating the items I'm putting in. I'm not just putting all the carrots and then all the beets, all the lettuce, and all the apple. I'm going to put probably the soft stuff in first, the apple, maybe a carrot, maybe a beet, and then all the greens, and then follow that by you know a beet, and then finish it out with some carrots. So in order to save you guys some time, we're just going to go ahead and uh, start this up and I'll, I'll get started and then we're just going to go ahead and fast forward the juicing process so you can see me basically uh, when I finish up. So let's go ahead and turn the machine on and hit start. Alright, we're going to first start off with that apple goes right in and it's getting stuck up with the little spout thing so we're going to use a carrot to push it right in there. Very important when using the juicers is to not, you know, put the apple in and then, oh, I'm putting the carrot right in. You want to let whatever the produce you put into the juicer process first and uh, run until you put the next produce item. This is super important, super critical. If you just cramp things in like this is not done yet, if I put another carrot in now, that could cause some uh, challenges with the machine. It will throw another carrot in there. And so, uh, yeah, just one thing at a time, let it fully process until you put the next thing in and you really shouldn't be using the pusher to jam things in. You're probably going to be pushing things in too fast. Uh, let's see, this whole head of lettuce here goes right in. And we're going to use a carrot to uh, help push that in a little bit. I think what I'll do is we're going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys to save you guys uh, some time. So I'm just about done juicing in the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer Elite Model C 7000. I have one carrot left. I did have to basically stop the machine, reverse it, and go forward a few times when it had super fat diameter carrots or when I, um, you know, actually fed things too quickly in the machine. Um, so let's see here. So pulp is still coming out, juice is still flowing, but I'm not hearing any kind of crunching noises on the last carrot I do like to put in there. I like to try to like push in some of the stuff that's kind of hanging out in the top but uh, I want to push let this drop in for you and see you guys uh, show you guys if this could handle the thick diameter care without stopping all right so that carrot made this machine stop <laughs> probably also make other uh, vertical juicers stop too so you just have to hit stop hit reverse and then hit forward uh, the other thing I had to do in this juicing uh, episode is actually I had to pre-cut the beets. The beets would not fit in this uh, three inch wide feed chute as they sat. So I had to cut them up into quarters so that they would fit. Um, this could be probably alleviated by picking out smaller beets at the store. Um, but generally I buy beets by the bunch and they're cheaper 
by the bunch um, if you get the biggest ones because then you get a better value, right? Although if you are buying beets by the pound, then yeah, buy some small ones so you don't have to do any pre-cutting and that could save you guys some time. Now always when you're done juicing in a vertical slow juicer, you want to wait until the juice stops flowing and the pulp stops moving out. If it's still moving, that means it's still juicing. And if we turn it off prematurely, that means you're going to lose some valuable juice. Uh, to me, I mean, the pulp is pretty much stopped flowing. The juice is barely dribbling out. There's still a lot of pulp up at the top that's really never going to get juice. We'll turn that off and we'll hit stop here. So wow, just to juice that much produce in the Kuvings uh, took me 6 uh, minutes and 49 seconds. Alright, let's go ahead and hit start on there and turn this baby on. First we're going to go ahead and dump the apple in in the trap door. Oops, and on the trap door you have to actually push it back down in and then you can see it's like literally crunching up the apple. I kind of like the housing on the Optimum a little bit better uh, than on the Kuvings because this is like so dark smoke you can't see really what's going on. This is a little bit lighter smoke so you can see what's going on. I mean so far this machine is grinding up each carrot. I did put the carrot through that back feed chute. This machine has kind of like a little whirring kind of sound which is interesting. Oh man, and this machine is making like a lot of pulp in the juice. I just used two things and already there's a lot of pulp uh, hanging out in the strainer there. I guess uh, what we're going to do to save some time is we're going to go ahead and speed this up for you guys and uh, we're going to come back at you uh, when I'm done. Alright, so we're just about done juicing in the uh, Bio Chef Quantum. We have one last carrot, and that carrot will not fit in the feed chute at the back of the housing. So we're just going to go ahead and shave off a little bit, see if I can get it to fit in there. And so the uh, impressive thing about the Bio Chefs so far is that actually it hasn't stopped once. The Koopings did stop several times. The Bio Chef is, is like, like a snail, it's slow and steady. It, like I put things into it, it just juices it rather slowly, crushes it up, but it doesn't stop. So this is actually quite impressive. So it has actually a really good amount of torque uh, in its 300 watt motor there. And so that last carrot's getting totally juiced up. And I, I do have to say that actually, um, we'll let this run a little bit, but actually in this top housing, there's a lot more pulp that actually didn't go into the machine. Whereas on the Bio Chef, actually, a lot more of the pulp, in my opinion, kind of actually got in the machine so that it actually got juiced. So that's actually quite impressive to me. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and let this run a little bit more uh, until the pulp stops flowing out of the machine. We'll come back at you uh, when we're ready. All right, so we're just about done. Looks like everything stopped moving. We're gonna go ahead and switch that off and hit the stop button here. That took uh, eight minutes and 57 seconds, maybe just say eight minutes, 40 seconds. So that's like two minutes longer than the Kuvings. So uh, this guy's not gonna save you necessarily time, <laughs> but it will juice without stopping. So once again, I try to show every juicer has its own set of pros and cons. What I want to do next is actually we're going to go ahead and take out the scales here. We're going to zero them out again for you guys because uh, I want to go ahead and weigh something out here. So I don't know if you guys can see this on the Bio Chef, but we're going to go ahead and pull this off for you guys so you guys can see. But can you guys see in that feed chute there? Like that's pretty much like a smoothie texture coming out. And if we look in the bottom of the bowl here of the Bio Chef, I mean there's lots of pulp that literally came out of the machine probably due to that main hole that I showed you guys earlier. Uh, in addition, the screen looks like it's uh, fairly clogged up, but this is totally normal. But there's a lot of pulp that actually made its way uh, into the juice there. So uh, we could go ahead and move this, and if I just hold this up, you guys could see like all that pulp. I mean, this if I didn't remove the pulp with a, a sieve, I mean, this, this juice would probably be like a smoothie. Right, and then let's next go over to the Kuving side, right? Now the Kuving side, it's it's not free of pulp either. There's the pulp there. But let me go ahead and show you guys the difference there. See the difference? That's a big difference, and it's dripping too. Alright, so we weighed out the pulp, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's basically, I can't hold it up because you guys can't see it because it's going to be inaccurate. 
But basically it was 87 grams on the BioChef Quantum, 25 grams on the Kuvings. So that's literally over three times the amount of pulp literally put in the juice. You know, for some people 25 grams actually is probably a pretty acceptable amount of pulp in the juice. Um, 86 grams in my opinion, I mean, I can see why they maybe don't include the smoothie strainer with this because you're just going to get a smoothie when you're juicing your carrots, all right? So anyways, uh, what's more important than the pulp actually inside the juice is actually how much juice did each juicer make despite having more pulp in the juice? Uh, did actually the Bio Chef actually make more juice? Well, let's go ahead and do a close-up to find out. All right, let's go ahead and give you guys a close up on the yields over on the BioChef Quantum. Looks like we have, if we go over to the sign there, looks like it's pretty much right around like almost 800, maybe like a line under 800 milliliters. And if we go over to the Kuvings, uh, once again, you know, pretty much looks like almost the same, like right about 800 milliliters once again back over to the bio chef quantum looks like right around 800 i mean if i had to say anything the bio chef maybe made a little bit less juice but i mean it really wasn't by what much and wasn't uh, too discernible so i gotta say i'm actually fairly impressed with the bio chef quantum basically made pretty much the same yield as the kuvings actually without stopping although it did make significantly more pulp in the juice um, both juicers do come with sieves, so you can sieve out the pulp. Now, I was using a, a coarse sieve today. I want to take it up a notch, and we're going to get out my fine sieve. Sometimes I use my fine, sometimes I use my courses. Um, now we're going to go ahead and uh, basically pour, this ju pour these juices out, and then we're going to pour them back through the fine sieve to see how much uh, juice we get. Um, actually, in, in the Kuvings here, there is some pulp in the bottom of the measuring cup here. So, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and pour this back through the fine sieve there. And now let's do the same on the Bio Chef. Wow, this one I definitely see a lot more pulp kind of going in than the Kuvings. So it'll be interesting to see once we uh, sit it back out what happens. I uh, lost them on the table. So that's not going to be super fair. But anyways, we could kind of figure out what's uh, there by how much pulp is actually in each sieve, not necessarily by the yields. So actually, after doing a fine sieve, there's a fair bit amount of pulp in the Kuvings, and after doing the fine sieve, you know, there's a fair bit about a, a amount of pulp in the Bio Chef. So I mean, if I had to say, it looks pretty even to me. Although maybe the Bio Chef had uh, maybe a little bit less pulp the second straining through. So that's interesting. So I mean, basically the yields. They're about the same, <laughs> is what I'm going to say. It's too close to call. Um, what I do want to do next is actually show you guys inside each machine here. I'm not sure why I couldn't get this back on all right. And so let's go ahead and uh, undo this. So on the bottom of this machine, you'll see what's in the bowl or the juicing uh, top here. Not a lot left inside there. and That's pretty good. In the Kuvings here, we take this guy off. You guys can see what's left inside there. Definitely, uh, you know, a fair bit more uh, pulp that actually did not get juiced inside the Kuvings. Next, we go ahead and pull out the auger. Here's the auger on the Kuvings coming right out, and the auger on the Bio Chef. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Probably not. Okay, auger on the Bio Chef, auger on the Kuvings. So, uh, you know, definitely they have some pulp around the top, but on the bottom they don't. And uh, underneath, actually, both augers is actually fairly clear. So that's definitely good. Sit this stuff down. 
And then uh, let's see, let's show you guys the screen, the juicing screens here with the wiping blade. So you guys can see like inside there's definitely pulp left inside there you guys are going to have to clean up. And uh, definitely more pulp actually inside the cubings to clean. Uh, inside the cubings it's all contained. Also I want you guys to note uh, the screen is pretty much clogged with care pulp that you have to scrape out with the, the uh, toothbrush or scraper end of the toothbrush cleaning tool. And then finally the juicing bowl. The juicing bowl and the cubings actually it's quite clean. Uh, that's going to be super simple to clean. That's because they have a closed bottom screen. And on the uh, BioChef, you can see there, you know, there's a lot of pulp and things that you have to clean that's actually in the juicing bowl. So, yeah, I've definitely made one huge mess. <laughs> I guess the other thing I want to do before I leave, though, is I want to go ahead and try each juice for you guys. <laughs> really made a nice mess today here. Okay, juice out of the BioChef Quantum. Mm. After I double sieved it, it's pretty much pulpery. Juice out of the cubings. I mean, pretty much the same. I strained it to the same particle size. That's a good juice. <laughs> you should make it at home. But anyways, uh, I gotta clean up this mess here. <laughs> and this took this video took me hours to film, create, and also now probably a good time, amount of time to clean up. Uh, the cubings generally takes me around five minutes to clean. I expect the same for the optimum. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on how fast I am, and that's probably about how fast it'll take you guys to clean. But at the end of every episode, I like to declare a winner of my juice off. And this one's going to be tough. I mean, the winner is not only the machine that actually made the most yield. And in this case, basically, the yields were pretty much identical after straining. If I didn't strain these juices and just showed you guys the winner without straining, actually, the BioChef would have won because it actually put more pulp in the juice, which would actually raise the level up. That's why I like to strain the juices to make sure we have a fair and even fight. Um, yeah, so... Pretty much even, this machine cost $50 less, that one's $50 more, that one's a better build quality, probably, I mean, that one I'm pretty confident has BPA-free parts. This one, I'm not so sure, although they advertise it as such. Uh, this one only has a 5-year warranty, that one has a 10-year warranty. I mean, this one didn't stop, that one stopped a couple times. I mean, oh, and this one actually took about 2 minutes longer to juice, <laughs> so... Taking all that in consideration, I'm going to tell, tell you guys this. I'm going to have to pick the winner of this juice off comparison, the Kuvings. Not only did it take two minutes less, I personally liked that it actually had a funnel and I actually had a larger feed chute without the drop down trap door. I, I found that to be a little bit of an inconvenience, but of course that depends on what you're juicing. But for this uh, situation, I have to cut some of the carrots, you know, whereas I didn't have to cut any carrots on the Kuvings. Um, the other thing is the build quality on this was not quite as good. I like the build quality and the Kuvings is a lot more solid. Also, Kuvings is a solid uh, company, um, you know, has an has a office that I have visited and service center in the United States and has a twice the amount of warranty. So I think for $50, it's definitely wise to get the Kuvings and maybe look past the Optimum if you guys are looking for a juice. So that being said, if you guys don't have the money, you know, and $50 is just a stretch, I mean, I would encourage you guys to save the mo save up the money and, and buy this one. But I think Optimum, if it was like maybe in the $299 price point for this machine, you know, maybe $250, that'd be a good solid investment for this, uh, you know, Optimum Quantum or the uh, Atlas Pro, which would be, I guess, the same uh, juicing parts. I mean, that's, that's pretty acceptable because it's a, it's a good quality machine made in China, although I do need to play with it more to see if it's uh, grading any kind of plastic or if I see any kind of wear on the screen. Uh, you know, after I am done cleaning it up. But that's pretty much my opinions. You know, the best vertical slow juicers come out of Korea. So I want to encourage you guys, if you guys are buying a vertical slow juicer, do your guys yourselves a favor, man. Buy one out of Korea. I haven't seen any China one, ones made in China perform super well up to this point. And I have tested a lot of them. So uh, if you guys want to learn more about the Kuvings, uh, buy it. Uh, I would encourage you guys to support me in my work by checking your... Checking the links down below in the description. 
You can click over to the website discountjuice.com and buy that machine if that's the one you're looking for for a wide feed shoot. But otherwise, you might want to check my other videos where I compare the Kuvings wide feed shoot to some of the other vertical slow juicers on the market, such as the Omega VSJ843, which is my personal favorite uh, juicer, or actually the Slow Star juicer, which is the other uh, best vertical single auger juicers, uh, actually, that they're all made in Korea. So uh, with that, if you guys like this video, I'm going to do more videos in the future with some juice off comparisons. Hey, please be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, leave your questions and comments down below. I do try to check the questions and comments for a few days after I post each video and answer them as much as I am able. Um, also, if you do really need to contact me, check the link down below in the description. There's a link to go to my website to ask me a question directly because I generally do answer those. If you guys are in my service area, which is the United States, if you guys live outside of the United States, please contact a dealer in your area to get further assistance. Um, also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below and make sure you click that little bell on there so you get notifications when I come out with new videos every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. I'll put a few um, links in the description below to uh, comparing uh, the Kuvings with some other different models if you guys are still looking to buy the right juicer for you. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors.